Let me get this. First Chronicles chapter 16. Let me just go there first. First Chronicles 16. In the uh, omnipotence of God. The omnipotence of God. And I know that's kind of a big word, uh, but omnipotence simply means, uh, I just put it in what I call, uh, you know, simple language, uh, the awesome power of God. Uh, folks, there is nothing, nothing stronger than God. There's no power uh, stronger than God. And let me go ahead and give you the outline here. Number one, the greatness of his power. Okay, the omnipotence of God, the greatness of his power. Number two, the wonder of his covenant. Uh, God made a covenant with us, and uh, we're going to look at that. And number three, and this, this, is, this is really neat, the depth of his protection. The depth of his protection. You know, in First Chronicles chapter 16, uh, you know, God made David uh, king over all of Israel. Uh, we know the story of Saul and how he disobeyed, and God literally took the kingdom uh, from him. And uh, he, David captured Jerusalem and conquered the surrounding cities. Uh, Jerusalem had become uh, the city of David because of his strong rule. One of the first things David did was bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. And you have to understand the Ark of the Covenant is the presence of God. Okay, In those days, it was literally the presence of God. It had been in the house of uh, Obed-Edom. Uh, but David brought it back to the tabernacle and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings unto the Lord. And I also want to remind you of some background of the children of Israel. They'd do good for a while, and then they'd mess up. They'd do good for a while, and then they'd mess up. And at this particular time, uh, they had messed up, and uh, God was chastening them. And, and the Philistines uh, were their arch enemies and, and really, really... Uh, you know, wreaked havoc uh, to the children of Israel. But in our uh, scripture text, uh, King David delivered a psalm of praise for what God had done for Israel. It is truly a, it, it, it truly was a song of thanksgiving for God, for being who he is, and for what he had done for Israel, which was defeating his enemies. So let's look at the omnipotence of God. Number one, or, or excuse me, verse seven. On that day, David first delivered this psalm into the hand of As Asaph, uh, his brethren, to thank the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Folks, when you just think of uh, the power of God, and, you know, even with the children of Israel, uh, their deliverance. And, uh, you know, they wandered for 40 years uh, in the wilderness. You know, their shoes didn't wear out, their clothes didn't wear out. Uh, when they needed water, they got water. Uh, there was a manna from heaven, uh, the provision of God. There were quail uh, there, and, and even in their complaining, you know, oh, we're, we're tired of this bread. Uh, and, and you could just see sometimes how they would just waver back and forth. Uh, but folks, if you truly think, and, and, and when we think of praise and thanksgiving, uh, folks, here's what you need to remember. I have to remind myself of this, okay? And this helps, uh, helps me greatly. There is always somebody worse off than you are. I don't care what situation you're in. You cannot name a situation where there's not somebody. And what we tend to do is we tend to dwell on the negative things in life. And then we can have positive, 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 and then a negative thing. And we dwell on the two negative things. And we don't take time to thank God and to praise God. Folks, quit looking at what you don't have and look at what you have. Number one, we got, we've got God. Folks, if God is on our side, honestly, what else do we need? So David is saying, man, call up on him. Make his deeds known. Sing unto him psalms, uh, uh, psalms unto him. 
talk of his wondrous works and the glory of his holy name. One thing, uh, even, even in calling uh, you know, our, our visitors and our church folks that visit here, we were at a, a house yesterday of somebody that's been coming here, and they just literally said, your music, your praise and worship gets your heart ready for the preaching of the word. And folks, I'm telling you, music, uh, it's so powerful. Uh, music is a way we praise God. You don't always have to be in church to do that. All right? Hold your finger there and go, go to Psalm 8. Go to Psalm 8 with me, if you would. Talking about God's omnipotence. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. And I'm telling you, folks, we have not seen, I mean, we've seen parts of the glory of God. We really have. But I do not think till we get to heaven will we see the true glory of God. Why? Because we're going to be in the presence of God. The presence of God. Out of the mouths of babes and of nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. I think of out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants. Old Testament, I think of Moses. Think about his start, all right? I mean, literally hidden in bushes, literally raised by Egyptians, all those, but yet he turned out to be the one who led the children of Israel into the prom not into the promised land, but out of captivity. I think of Samuel, which would be in the time of David, anointing, all right, uh, the king of Israel. And uh, I also think of Elijah the prophet, okay? All these, these, these men and, uh, that, that started, you know, and, and God's hand was on them when they were young. I think of Jeremiah, okay, in the mother's womb. Okay, in his mother's womb, the Bible says, God set him apart to be a prophet of God. Verse 3, and when I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers and the moon and the stars which you are, have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? One of the things on vacation we got to do is, uh, you know, one night, or actually two nights when we could see the sky, you know, we'd go out and we'd sit in a glider and we'd just look up and we'd watch the sun go down, Lori and I, all right? And folks being, uh, you know, out in, we were, we were out in the country, uh, the, everything was luscious and green. Uh, the drive up there was beautiful. I honestly don't understand how somebody could say, you know, uh, this all happened by, you know, accident, all right, there's, there's no way. And so, and, and you think of the solar system, okay? We're rotating right now and we don't even know it. Everything, if, if the sun was tilted two degrees one way, we would burn up or we would freeze. Everything stays in orbit. The moon, it, and the sun comes up every morning, okay? That's the power of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. His spoken word. Folks, we, we need to understand how, how great that is. And what, are men, what is man that you are mindful of? It? Think of your bodies. All right, your heart is beating. At one time, and I didn't take the time to look up all the numbers, but, but how often your heart beats is just amazing. How much blood, how many, uh, the length of veins that are going through your body, your eyes, everything, folks. It's got a creation of God. And it's, it's all about his omnipotence. And the son of man that you visit him. What is he saying? That's a small s. The greatest gift God has given mankind is Jesus Christ. See, we needed God. We needed Jesus Christ. Then he describes it. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. And again, angels... Uh, you know, they're, they're a place of service. They are messengers, okay? Uh, they're in heaven, okay? But, but even, even us down here, that's what's amazing, the call of God on our lives, to be where you are, to know that you have a purpose in life and know that you have a ministry. 
speaks of that. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. Folks, I am telling you, the Bible says when somebody comes down the aisle and gets saved, all heaven breaks out in praise and worship. All the angels are rejoicing over a sinner coming home. And you have made him have dominion over the works of your hands. All right, We, we are rulers if you think about it. And then he gives a list of the things that he has put under uh, his feet and our feet. Uh, all the sheep and the oxen and the beasts of the fields, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea that pass through the seas. And then he says the same thing again. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Listen, folks. God is the King of kings and Lord of lords. His power is amazing. All right? There is nothing, nothing more powerful. Uh, we saw Monday night, you know, the power of, of the wind and the power, you know, how it can just knock trees over and, and all that's going. And I'm just telling you, folks, there is nothing more powerful than God. So we see the greatness of His power. Let's, let's keep reading back in verse 10. Glory to His holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord, who seek the Lord in His strength, and seek His face forevermore. I think it's amazing that God even talks to us. Think about that. Okay, the invisible God, the creator of these heavens, we can communicate with Him. There's never a time when, when He is not available. Okay? He can read our minds. He can read our hearts. He knows the number of hairs on your head that even a God like that would have a personal relationship with us, that he cares about us, speaks is of his omnipotence. And it says, seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works, which he has done. I guarantee you, if we stopped right now and started testimonies, everyone here would give us a testimony of something that God has done in their life that I'm telling you, some of them would be, it's a miracle that I'm even here today. God was watching over me. God intercepted this. God came in between this. God protected me through this. Remember His works, His wonders, His judgments, His mouth. O seed of Israel, His servant. O you children of Jacob, His chosen ones. Which brings us to the second point. Not only the greatness of His power, but the wonder of his covenant. His covenant. What is in a covenant? Folks, it's an agreement. Okay? And when you see covenant in the Bible, it's a promise. It's a promise. We as men break promises. Okay? And I, I, I know, I, I, folks, when we talk about our children and especially our grandchildren, if, we're gonna, if we tell them we're going to do something, we need to do that. Okay? If you say, I'm going to take you fishing, you need to go fishing. All right? but the covenant and the promise that God, ha God has. Look at verse 14. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. The wonder of His covenant. Remember His covenant forever. The word which He commanded for thousand generations. Which means, folks, forever is always. His covenant will always be there. He doesn't change. Man changes laws. Man changes covenants. But God's covenant is forever according to this. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for a statue, to Israel for an ever, everlasting covenant. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 12. Let's look at this covenant that he is speaking of. And folks, this covenant is for us also. It is for Israel. And he just went through the list. He started at Abraham and was going forward in that. Genesis 12, verse 1, Now the Lord said to Abra Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. Folks, Abraham, Abram had faith. Abram, Abraham was in uh, Hebrews chapter 11. He was even called the father of faith. 
He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know how long he was going to be gone. He, by faith, trusted God and believed God. And here, here are the ones. There are seven promises he makes. Number one, I will make you a great nation. A great nation. And he did that. I will bless you. Folks, we are so blessed. We are so blessed. I will make your name great. And he has done that. And you shall be a blessing. Folks, why does God bless us? So that we can be a blessing to others. If God has blessed you, turn around and, and bless someone else. Bless them. All right? I will bless those who bless you. Which, which again, he does. And he, he sends people in our lives. Okay? That covenant. He sends people uh, to, to help that covenant, that promises that we have. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, which means even you know, the, the, the mean part and the evil part and the lost folks, all right? He protects us, all right, from them. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Folks, it all started with Adam and Eve. It all started there. And when you think about that, the Garden of Eden was a perfect utopia. It was perfect. And for what I love about it, and, and I believe this was all my heart, through all the tribulation, through all that's going on, it's going to go a full circle back. And I'm telling you, you know, when we live forever and ever, God made that promise to us, and he will keep his promise. That is the covenant part of that relationship. Now look also back, back in our text in verse 18. And saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan. And of course, we know that is uh, you know, the, the children of Israel and, and the promised land. As an allotment for your inheritance, uh, when you were few in number, indeed very few in strangers in it. Folks, I am telling you, the Bible says in James, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. I realize your house may be paid for, but who, who owns your house? Well, you say you do, or some people say, but no, folks, God gave you the, the working part of that. God provided the money for you. God enabled you to do that, and everything we have. It is his covenant. One of the covenants I love, uh, we won't turn there, but Hebrews 13, 5, 13, 5, this is a covenant, folks. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Folks, I'm telling you, parents walk out on kids, husband and wives walk out on each other. People are let down. Uh, people really sometimes are scarred because somebody walked away from them. But I'm telling you, God will never walk away from you. He will never forsake you. If you're by yourself in an empty house or, or a house by yourself, if it's dark or like it was Monday night, folks, I'm just telling you, God was there. I was amazed that there were, were no fatalities over in the Crawford County there. I was just amazed, folks. God is there. And then 1 Peter chapter 2. Look at 1 Peter 2. We're looking at part of this covenant that he talks. 1 Peter that he speaks of. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Look at this. But you are a chosen generation. Folks, you are a child of God. Okay? You're a child of God. Things don't affect you that affects other people. One of the things the Bible says, we shouldn't worry about stuff. We shouldn't worry. Why? God's in control of everything. He chose you. He chose you. And man, we lived in that, that year. We grew up under those picking teams and picking sides. All right? And, and that's what, you know, you always wanted the best athletes. You always wanted the ones that were going to win on your side. Well, folks, we are on the winning side. God can take, uh, you know, you think of, of, of Gideon and, you know, he had a, this huge army and God said, no, no, that's way too many. Told him three times, that's way too many. And you can just see the underdogs. I think of Elijah, 
Okay, Elijah's, the odds were literally 650 to 1. Folks, when God's on your side, you're going to win. You are going to win. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Okay, royal priesthood. Christ is in us. We not only have God watching over us, we have Jesus inside us. We have the Holy Spirit. Okay? It's that, that dunamis, that power inside of us. It's not, you know, uh, you know, we can work this stuff up or we just, you know, and, and I've heard the intestinal fortitude. And all that is good. In athletics, you have to dig deep. But I'm telling you, you have been chosen by God. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, His own special people. Folks, I don't care if your family walks away from you. God will never walk away from you. That you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, who were once not a people, but now are the people of God who had obtained mercy and now have, have obtained mercy. You know the neat thing about it is there's not a yearly membership to be a Christian. We don't have to carry cards to tell people, hey, I'm a Christian. Folks, they ought to be able to look at our lives. And as, Joe, as, as Steve spoke on the joy, folks, that joy ought to be just coming out of us because of who we are, because of whose we are. We have been chosen, and, and God loves us. One more, uh, Revelation, talking about his power, his omnipotence. Revelation chapter 1. Go to Revelation 1. Revelation 1. And this really is the sum total. I am the Alpha, that's the beginning, and the Omega, which is the end. God started this with the spoken word, and God is going to end life and earth as we know it, as at his, his word. Now here it is. Who is? What is that present? Okay? He's all-powerful today. Who was? He has always been that way. How do you know? His word has told us. His word has told us. And who is to come? And here's the omnipotence here. The Almighty. See, sometimes we think Satan is mighty. Sometimes we think Satan is winning. Even looking at a world, I hear this all the time. All the time I hear this. Man, Satan is kicking our teeth and Satan is doing this. And he's doing that. Folks, you can have personal revival where there, you know, revival is going on other places. He, I'm telling you, he's going to win. He's going to rule. It's going to be okay. So we see not only the greatness of his power, the wonder of his covenant, the depth of his uh, protection. Back in our text. And when they went from one nation to another and from one kingdom to another, uh, people, he permitted no man to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sakes, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. I think of the children as Israel. We're talking about the depth of his pr uh, protection. Folks, Psalms 139 says, There is nowhere you can go that he can't find you. There's no place on earth or in heaven where he is baffled saying, man, I can't find that lost sheep. I can't find that. that he is everywhere. I think of the children of Israel wandering for 40 years and, and the cloud by day. How did they know when to move? When the cloud moved, they moved. The fire by night. The fire was the protection. That was that presence of God. Uh, I think of the Red Sea. All right, folks, only God could do. You can't. You can't say, well, there was an east wind, that it was warm, and if there was a sea under there, I'm telling you, it's not going to dry out in, in a few minutes. All right? God parted the sea, and the Bible says they went over on dry land. They were no match for Pharaoh's army. The chariots were on them. And, and, and you know, we're not talking about fiction here. We're talking about God's protection. All the children of Israel got over, and God just released the water and protected them. We think of the defeat at Jericho, taking Jericho. Made no sense whatsoever. If you thought, and a general walked into your office and said, here's what we're going to do, 
you would have laughed at him and said, that's crazy. You are a nut. I don't know what your deal is. We're just going to walk around for seven days. And then we're just going to shout. All right? And, and, and then the walls are going to come tumbling down. Folks, I'm telling you, that, that miracle there, God did it with his pinky. He wasn't, he, that didn't even work. He just went, Psst, and the walls come falling down. I mean, I think of the protection and the power of God. And, and, you know, you can go to the New Testament. You can see the miracles that Peter and Paul uh, did. And, folks, uh, it, it's just amazing, uh, his protection. Uh, I, I am just telling you, we should not fear, folks. We should not fear. Okay? And, and the number one thing people are afraid of, every book, psychology, every Christian psychology book that I have read, the number one fear is the fear of dying. And folks, I am telling you, of all the things, and again, I know what most people is, they're, they're more concerned how they die. Okay, now, you know, I do not want to die in a fiery car crash. That is, but I'm just telling you, folks, uh, I, when I think of fire, I think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know what could happen? God could just... Stop your heart right then, and you're not going to feel a thing. Okay? What they did. I mean, you think of God's protection. Three Hebrew children. Daniel in the lion's den. Folks, they would starve lions. They would starve them so that when they uh, sensed meat or blood or anything, they would just literally tear them to shreds. What was that? One was there was a fourth angel in that fire. Folks, that's Jesus. Jesus was right there protecting them. And, and Daniel did the right thing. So, uh, one, one last verse. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43. I love this. The title there is the Redeemer of Israel. But now thus saith the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you. Okay? Folks, the Bible says in Psalm 139, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. God didn't make a mistake with you. He made you just like he wanted you to be. That is his power. Here it is. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Oh, folks, would you memorize this verse? All right, 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, 8. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. See, the problem we have is everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die to get there. All right? And I am holding out for the rapture. I really am. I'm hoping we all get to go together. But if not, is that not what the, uh, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said? If not, we will not bow down to your gods. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. One of the funny things, <laughs> I read this uh, earlier in the week, or actually Monday, and my mom cracked me up. I had three sisters, and when she'd get mad, she would always call the wrong name. And most of the time, it should have been Tony. Most of the time, but she'd say, Deborah, no, Susan, no, Tony. All right, listen, folks, God knows our name. He knows us personally. When you pass, look at this. You are mine. We are his children. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. Folks, God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. He is almighty. He controls everything. Think about your breathing. He controls your breathing. Okay? You're breathing. Everything about you, everything in this world, He controls. And here's the bottom line. There is not anything that our God cannot do. There's nothing. You know, when you're a kid, you gave him one of these. I remember saying it. My dad can beat your dad up. <laughs> hey, my Heavenly Father can take care of anything this world throws at us, folks. 
It's never over till God says it's over. So I pray as you go to bed tonight and as you think about his omnipotence, folks, he is all-powerful. He is almighty. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, thank you. Thank you for this night. And God, I thank you for David. And Lord, I know he messed up earlier, but God, you forgive him. Lord, you just uh, you, you uh, reinstate him. Uh, God, he truly was a man after your, after your heart. And God, I thank you that uh, you never leave us or you never forsake us. We can never get so far away from you that you don't know exactly where we're at. And God, truthfully, you are everything we need. Everything, God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So God, I pray that that would encourage us. Lord, really, the Wednesday nights are just that midweek boost. It's that midweek, uh, you know, uh, hearing from you. It's uh, seeing the power of the Word and just hearing the Word. And Lord, just letting these scriptures fall over us and fall into us. and God, I pray that we would just really meditate on, on your greatness. God, you have been so good to us. God, we don't deserve it. We really don't. Lord, we're not trying to be some false humility, God. Uh, but Lord, in spite of ourselves, you love us. Uh, you have made a covenant with us. And you keep every promise. So God, I pray that it would just encourage us in the faith. You know, I, I understand, you know, there, there are times, it's just tough. It's just tough. And there are times, uh, I, I don't understand. I talked to a man today that just says, I don't understand. And then finished the sentence. And, and God was in there. And I simply told him, there's going to be a lot of things we don't understand in life. But I do understand this. God loves me. God wants the best for me. God will pull me through any situation that we have in life. So God, help us to rest in his promises this night and in the days ahead. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We thank you for joining us this evening at Rahill Baptist Church, and may God richly bless you.